Hey guys, this is Adam from Sentinel 3D Scanning. Structured Light 3D Scanning is an amazing tool for both inspection and reverse engineering workflows, but it does have its limits. One of the biggest hurdles you may face when scanning a part is the part's surface. If it's too reflective, transparent, or dark, your scan data probably won't look so good. In these cases, it's best to apply a coating to improve your results. But which coating should you use? In today's video, we're going to put a few of the more commonly used coatings to the test in a not-so-epic showdown to see which one works best. Let's meet today's competitors. The first contender is my personal favorite, titanium dioxide powder mixed with denatured alcohol. I've been using this coating for years, and if you apply it properly with a good quality airbrush, it is possible to get a smooth, consistent coating only a few microns thick. The only issue I've had with this coating is that the results tend to vary depending on the titanium oxide powder you buy. I had really good success with powder from Sigma for a long time, but then all of a sudden, I got a bunch of bad batches and the coating got really inconsistent and clumpy. My hope for today's test is that my current batch of TiO2 performs well, but maybe it won't, we'll see. The second contender is tempura paint, which is also diluted in denatured alcohol. The nice thing about this coating is that the part can be handled after it is coated, but it can still be washed off with water when you're done. My experience with this coating is that it works well and sprays on smooth, but it can be quite thick. The third competitor I will be trying is a new one to me. Asa Blue is a 3D scan spray in a can that evaporates after about 4 hours. I've never used it before, but I have used another evaporating scan spray called Cyclododocaine. I wasn't impressed with cyclododocaine as a scan spray because it smelled really bad and was very rough and thick when applied to a part. Hopefully a sub blue performs better. The fourth and final contender I will be trying is Arm & Hammer's Foot Spray Powder. I've never used this before, but I've always heard people talk about using foot spray for 3D scanning. I'm not even sure if this is the right brand, but it's what they happen to have at Target, so I guess that's what we'll be testing. So how can we tell which coating is best? In order to be as objective as possible, I'm going to measure three attributes of these coatings. Coating thickness, brightness, and flatness. These attributes will then be compared against each other to find out which coating provides the largest increase in brightness while keeping added material and flatness to a minimum. I will also mention a few subjective findings along the way as well. Now, in order to make sure my scanner can detect a tiny change in thickness, I first scanned two rung together grade zero gauge blocks several times. I then measured the thickness of the top gauge block on each scanned mesh. The thickness measured was repeatable to about two or three microns, so my Steinbickler Comet L3D scanner should be able to handle these tests, but just barely. I'd rather use a non-contact surface profilometer to check thickness and roughness, but since I don't have one, my scanner will have to do. Now for the tests. The test specimen I will be using for these tests is a grade zero ceramic gauge block purchased specifically for this purpose. I wanted to use a ceramic gauge block so I can measure thickness of the coating from the gauge block's flat, white surface. Before applying the coating, I masked off most of the gauge block surface with black electrical tape, leaving only a thin section in the middle exposed. This allows me to compare the coated portion of the gauge block to the uncoated portion after the tape is removed. I chose black electrical tape as my masking material so that the coatings I apply are more visible, allowing me to eyeball how much I've applied and how smooth it is. Moving into the spray booth, I coated the specimen with A sub blue. The coating seemed to spray on without any hiccups, but it does have a scent to it. It's not a bad scent, but I would have preferred no scent at all. The coating's roughness also seemed to increase as its thickness grew. A sub blue is the only evaporating coating I'm evaluating for this video, so I need to take care not to delay further testing after the coating is applied. Next, I needed to take a photo of the specimen so that I could later measure its brightness. Prior to beginning these tests, I placed a mirrorless camera in a dark closet where I could completely control the lighting. And after making sure the camera was set to manual mode, I snapped a picture. I'll keep the camera settings and the lighting the same for all future trials. With a photo now taken, I removed the tape from the gauge block and placed it on my scanner's rotation stage to start the scanning process. I captured 10 scans across a single full rotation before creating a mesh from the data and exporting it for further analysis. I 
After cleaning the gauge block and reapplying more electrical tape, I moved on to the coating I have the lowest expectations for. Foot powder. But much to my surprise, the coating went on smoother and more evenly than I expected. Like Asa Blue, it has a scent to it, which I imagine is helpful in deodorizing stinky feet. One issue I experienced, though, was that I had to stop and let the coating dry a few times before proceeding. If I hurried, the coating would start to pool, and I didn't want that to happen. I repeated the photo and scan for this sample, and then tried the tempura paint. I didn't really have any complaints about this coating other than that it built up faster than I typically like, threatening to pool up on the specimen. Perhaps this could be improved with a thinner concentration. Unlike the other coatings in this challenge, it isn't a big deal if you touch the part after coating, as long as you don't have sweaty hands. If you do, make sure to wear gloves. Finally, I arrived at my favorite coating, titanium oxide. And unfortunately, this batch isn't doing so great. It seems to be coagulating quickly and keeps clogging up my airbrush, causing it to sputter. On top of this, the coating on the part almost has a gummy quality about it. It's hard to explain, but I can already tell that this batch of titanium oxide coating is not going to fare well in this test. After performing each of these tests on each coating type, I then performed them all again two more times for each coating type, trying to vary the thickness for each test. After all of these tests were complete, I moved into the analysis portion of these tests. To evaluate the lightness of the coating, I use the digital color meter application found within macOS to evaluate an L value at six locations immediately beside the untaped portion of the gauge block. I then averaged these measurements and paired it with the coating thickness and flatness. To evaluate thickness, I used GOMINSPECT to measure thickness from the uncoated portion of the gauge block at six locations. The average value then went on to be paired with the average lightness value. I also used Goman Spect to measure flatness. So which coating came out on top? Uh, foot powder? Yes, that's right, foot powder. As you can see in this chart comparing thickness to brightness, foot powder required the thinnest coating to reach a given brightness. The higher the brightness, the wider the sample. Wider samples will produce better scan data. Tempura paint came in second, performing adequately, A sub in third despite its rough texture, and my precious titanium oxide came in last? How can this be? As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm fairly biased towards titanium oxide powder. When I saw the results that it had come in last place, I immediately set out to try to find a solution or a product or a mixture that would work and give me better results. I hopped on Amazon and ordered three new titanium oxide powders, hoping that I could recreate the legendary coating I remembered using soon after beginning my career. After the new contenders arrived, I made a variety of concoctions, mixing each of the powders with both denatured alcohol and isopropyl alcohol. Some of the coatings failed pretty much immediately, either refusing to create a suspension in the solvent they were mixed with or refusing to break down into a homogeneous liquid. However, a miracle took place and one of the powders did dissolve into both solvents, thus fulfilling the ancient prophecies from years past. I took up testing once again and performed the same tests as before. This time, I only put foot powder and the new titanium oxide mixture against each other, and unsurprisingly, the titanium oxide came out on top. The new mixture went on extremely smooth and achieved a good brightness with a thin coat. It didn't beat foot spray by a huge margin, but it's enough to make it my preferred coating once again, especially when trying to make my scans as accurate as possible. So after all that work, what can we take away from this? Well, a few things. First, all these coatings did a great job at their intended purpose. Although some are better than others, any of them could probably be used if your accuracy requirements aren't too tight. Second, foot powder makes a decent coating. I admit it, I was not expecting this, but I wouldn't be against using foot spray as a backup in a pinch. Three, pan titanium oxide mixed with denatured alcohol is now my preferred coating for 3D scanning. I also learned that A sub blue works well if you need a coating that evaporates. If you're scanning somebody's car or something fragile that can't be cleaned easily, this spray is the one to use. And as a footnote to all of this information, Please keep in mind that this was only one set of tests with very few data points. 
Instead of relying on these few number of data points, I would encourage you to do your own testing and to use the coding that you find works best for you. Hopefully you found at least some part of that useful, and hopefully it encouraged you to do your own tests and to continuously improve your own scanning processes. If you have a preferred coding for 3D scanning, tell us about it in the comments below. And as always, if you're ever in need of 3D scanning services, make sure to check out Sentinel 3D Scanning. Our website is in the description below.